Okay, I'm back. That was fun. I got to drive the car around the block to um, get my cat wooed from the weeds, so to speak. <laughs> so, we got her back. She's in the house. She's probably not going to be a kitty that's going to be allowed out of doors very often. At least not on a leash. Which, she was on a leash, but she slipped her collar. So, that happens. Anyways, where were we? Okay. Oh, and then it says in verse 5, Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own eyes. This pretty much talks about, in my opinion, regarding the narcissist. Handle him like you would handle anybody that's toxic. Do not sit there and try to reason with him, argue with him, um, sit and ponder what you could have done or said differently or any of that stuff. Answer him according to his folly. In other words, let him own his stuff. You don't own it and you don't take responsibility or guilt over it. You move on. You take care of yourself. Practice good self-care. Build your self-esteem. And that's how you answer him according to his own folly. Let him own his folly or his foolishness. Okay, then it says, He who sends a message by the hand of a fool cuts off his own feet and drinks violence. That basically means anybody that the narcissist is using as their little cohort is uh, going to reap what they sow as well as the narcissist will eventually. If they continue to partnership with somebody that's attacking you or attacking other people, they're going to drink violence. They're going to get the consequences of their violence eventually. What If not in this life, possibly in another life if you believe that way. But the point is usually what goes around does come around again. Um, let's see. Like the legs of the lame that hang limp is a proverb in the mouth of fools. That means even something wise that comes out of a narcissist's mouth is not going to have the impact as it would if it came out of somebody's mouth that had a good character. So in other words, don't trust their advice. Like one who binds stone in a, a stone in a sling is one who gives honor, or he who gives honor to a fool. Again, <clears throat> it's talking about if somebody praises a fool, or a narcissist in this case, he's like one who binds a stone in a sling. In other words, they're just getting ready to fire away at somebody. Um, they're getting ready to attack. And they're dangerous. Somebody that praises someone that's doing wrong is a toxic, dangerous person. Okay. Like a thorn that goes into the hand of a drunkard is a proverb in the mouth of fools. Well, basically a thorn that goes into the hand of a drunkard is probably hardly even noticed because the guy's drunk. So proverb in the mouth of fools, again, is not something that's going to have value. Even wisdom in the mouth of a fool, or a narcissist in this case, is not going to seem wise because their character doesn't line up with what they're saying. All right. As a dog returns to his own vomit, so a fool repeats his folly. You know, there's a lot of verses in the Bible that talk about correcting fools and correcting sluggards and scoffers and things like that. And then it basically says if you correct them, you have to correct them again and again and again. In other words, they don't learn from their foolishness, which is why we need to know that narcissists rarely ever change unless they are just people that have some narcissistic traits. I'm talking about a full-fledged malignant narcissist. He's not going to change his ways. He's always going to keep on hurting people. He's always going, or she, is always going to blame other people for their problems they're not going to change you're not going to one day wake up and say oh gee you've done so much for me I really should repay you by being kind I really should repay you by meeting your needs and paying the bills on time and caring what you think they're not it's not gonna happen okay it's just not not likely not unless the person you're with just has traits if they are a full-fledged narcissist do not expect them to change because they will not ever change Okay, barring a miracle of God, like I always say. Okay, it says, um, So as a dog returns to his vomit, so a fool repeats his folly. It's going to keep on happening again and again and again. On the flip side of that, the person that stays with the narcissist is going to keep attracting narcissists until he or she deals with the issues that attracted them in the first place. The codependency issues, the dependency issues, the insecurities, the fears, the um, possibly ignorance of what narcissists are and what they can do and the fact that there really are dangerous, toxic people out there. If you don't believe me, if you're one of these people that believe 
everybody is basically good at heart. You might want to pick up your newspaper or watch the news sometimes. Serial killers are not basically good at heart. They are evil people. Narcissists are not basically good at heart. They are messed up, disturbed, dysfunctional people that were raised in dysfunctional situations or had dysfunctional traumatic things happen to them. They are not normal. They do not follow the normal standard code of do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. Be kind to them and they'll be kind to you. No, they don't do that. They don't follow that protocol. So don't expect that of them and don't be surprised if you are with one and they do something that you're just shaking your head going, I can't believe they really did it. Well, believe because that's what narcissists do that's just their character that's what they're made of okay do you see a man wise in his own eyes there's more hope for a fool than for him okay once again a narcissist is wise in his own eyes or her own eyes they think they are all that um they want everybody else to proclaim that about them they're wise in their own eyes and there's more hope for a fool than for them now god is saying there's somebody even more foolish than the foolish and that's a fool so either way, whether you're with a fool or you're with a narcissist, it's kind of the same thing. Okay. Uh, it talks about laziness. We won't get into that because we already know the narcissist is lazy. That's why he has to have you do everything for him or she for her. Um, I like verse 16. The lazy man is wiser in his own eyes. Than seven men who can answer sensibly. I'll let you just ponder that one. I don't have to get into what that all means, but it's pretty self explanatory. He who passes by and meddles in a quarrel, not his own, is like one who takes a dog by the ears. If you take a dog by the ears, most likely the dog is going to bite you, especially if the dog does not know you, which I assume is what they're talking about. So if you try to butt into a situation, especially with a narcissist, you try to rescue somebody from that and the narcissist knows about it, you're going to get ripped apart because if you grab a dog by the ears, they're going to attack you. So be careful if you're trying to help somebody that's in this situation. Believe me, I know because I'm in that position and I hear from people quite regularly about um, how the person that came to me is lying to me and don't believe them and they make up stories and whatever. The problem with being in my position is I can't see both people at once. So I can only take the word of the person talking to me. So if you come to me and say, I'm living with a narcissist and I hate it and I'm miserable. Can you help me? I'm going to help you from your standpoint. I'm not going to believe hearsay from somebody else unless they come to me for help. And if they come to me and I detect they're a narcissist, I'm going to refer them to somebody else that specializes in helping narcissistic people. Because I help their victims, not the narcissists themselves. Okay. Let me pause this and I'm going to go on to the next video for the rest of this teaching. Thank you.